Hello and God bless you. This is Ellen Mongan and welcome to Wow Mom. We're glad you've joined us today and we are glad to be here. Um, we hope that you watch our shows and pass them on and then watch them again. My co-host Jane Ann Bombrick. Hey Jane Ann, how are you doing? Hey Ellen. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm back from the dead, Jane. You know, there's that, that big C word it is in chores. <laughs> You're like, okay, Lord. it really is <laughs> like, like chores for kids. You know, you okay. It was a chore to get better. I felt like Lazarus in the tomb and then I'm alive. You know, like here I am. I got to put my smile on. <laughs> I got my clothes on every day and did my makeup because a friend of mine told me that if you get dressed and make yourself look good, you feel better. It did not work. <laughs> <laughs> I for two weeks. I, I like yay. Sometimes things work, Dan, for one person and then not someone else. So you've been healthy, right? You've been healthy and strong, doing a new business. Yes, I had that C word as well a right. couple of weeks ago, but I'm in the land of the living now. So. Him too. It doesn't feel good to be alive and to be alive in Christ. We have some alive people on the show today, Jan. Can you introduce our oh, guests? Super Boy, so happy we have guests. We can. I can never pronounce their last name. So. I mean, they do have a last name. This is very unusual. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So welcome, Alan um, Miglorato and Daryl Dizik. I hope I did okay on that. And um, we're excited to have you guys. And I'm just going to read a little bit of a bio for Alan. And he is the author of The Manly Art of Raising a Daughter and co-author of Failing Forward, Leadership Lessons for the Catholic Teens Today. And he recently appeared on EWTN's television shows, Women of Grace, and at home with Jim and Joy, and gives parenting tips and advice on numerous radio shows throughout the country, as well as having his own radio show on Divine Mercy Radio to help parents raise their kids in the faith, in a faith-filled home, and stay actively engaged in the Catholic Church, and to speak about his books. Alan is the founder of Adventure Catholic Formation Leadership training and has a certification in youth ministry from the University of Dayton, as well as being a veteran of the U.S. Army. He has been married to the same beautiful woman since 1993, has raised three beautiful daughters, and is the owner of a sign and advertising company in the Orlando area. Alan offers parish missions, speaking engagements, parent teen retreats, weekends ongoing formation training for parents, and interactive weekend experiences for high school aged teens, his passions are spending time with his family and leading others to Jesus. And currently, Alan is in, a, in discernment for the diaconate at his home parish um, of St. Mary Magdalene in Altamont Springs, Florida. And then we also have Daryl, and we are very excited that you guys are with us today. And Daryl, we, we wanted you to give your own bio. That's, at, at that's because I realized that's, I forgot to send the, the bio. The <laughs> I, I, I saw email. that email. I saw that email, Ellen. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I forgot to send the bio. No, <laughs> oh, Alan no, and his no. list of accomplishments. Don't read my email. See my husband. Don't read them. Don't worry. You can do hey, so much better on Ad Libby. Listen, Go. Listen, listen. <laughs> He's got this whole ordination smell about him. <laughs> it know. happens like... When young men are discerning the priesthood, went through it, everyone's like, oh my gosh, it's all about them. The minute he becomes diaconate discerning, it's like, let's move Daryl out and Alan in. Listen, so, listen, I'm okay. That's okay. Daryl, I'm you got a chance. No, no, you got a chance to send you a bio. So I think from now on, whenever we do these interviews, I think it should be the first seven minutes about what I've done and then for them to say, and Daryl. And Daryl. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. 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 He obviously reads his emails. But Daryl, you, you do well on your feet, so just say a few words about yourself. Uh, <laughs> well, um, so I'm the guy who helped Alan be, discern the diaconate, helped him, no, <laughs> help him get his, right, helped him get his youth ministry Union. certificate, helped him not. I mean, we just, that's all good. We worked together and through youth ministry and spent many years in ministry and run my real estate business full time got suckered back into working for the church part-time again. Um, I know, I know. You. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus is like a mobster. He's making me an offer I can't refuse. And it's like, Aww. oh my goodness. So we're uh, we're out there rocking and rolling for the Lord. And uh, so Are you the head of the youth ministry? Or are you, uh, what are you, what's your role? I don't know. Let's say it, Ellen, if you ain't first, you're last. So um, <laughs> it's Jesus, Jesus, me, the parish priest, and then you know, so, yeah, yeah, we're out there. Um, They're raising leaders that are unafraid and bold. 
<laughs> Listen, I told him, I said, look, I got a business to run. You know, I don't have time. And they're like, I told God, I said, look, I can't do it. I got this, this, this. So I told the priest and I told the pastoral associate, here's my deal. I can't do all this, but I can do this. And they're like, oh, that's fine. Come on. I'm like, oh my okay. gosh. All right, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I was I'm asking because I do have a friend that is also in the same field. And right now, I don't know if he's ready to go back. You know, he took a little sabbatical. Anyways, I thought you'd lo- you work well with him. I'll tell you yeah. another email that you don't read, of course. Okay, please. Thank you. <laughs> so we yes. have some questions for you all. Do you give your um, bio? Was that your bio though? That was it. No. I was. Meet Daryl and Alan. <laughs> they have names you can't pronounce that they, they know what they're doing. They're leading others to Christ. Children yeah. to be leaders in our faith. You know, we all know that our faith is, is firm, especially those of us who have the nuns raise them. We have solid faith, but then this generation needed some help from a few friends. So Alan and Daryl both stepped up and they're they're doing some marvelous things. Jan, do you have any questions? What do you think? Great guys. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I want to learn. I need, <laughs> we have a lot of children, a lot of grandchildren, <laughs> made a lot of mistakes uh, trying to, you know, so yeah, let's, let's hear what, um, you know, I'd love to hear about some things for some teens. I've got teens right now. I think so too. And they were not famous when we first girl, had girl teens. Wait, wait, I need to distinguish girl teens. Okay, yeah. that's they're right. different. That's right. they're Alan different. has girls as well. So girls are easier, Alan, when you're on one of Grace. I was thinking, yeah, but he has girls. Oh, <laughs> girls are easier for or train up a little yeah, bit. They don't they do what smell. you say. Pardon? They don't Not smell. Too. Hard. Pardon? Girl teens don't smell. <laughs> but you know what? I was thinking when we first met you all on the air, I was I was alone giving an article, I mean a talk on Catholic mom and y'all weren't famous, but now they're pretty famous. They've been on different things, have their own radio show. I mean like, hey, you are moving. So what do you think your secret is to um we know what your secret is to getting along, your real brothers in the Lord, but what's your secret to having this thing move forward? It's one book called Falling Forward and it's also a whole a whole series of teachings in the book. I think uh anytime that somebody kind of stops and looks at how famous they're becoming, I think they should run out of ministry as fast as they can because it's not <laughs> about us. It's about the Lord, you know, and it's about I wrote if, that if notes, honestly, if the Holy Spirit wasn't working through us, we'd only get so far. I mean, uh, you know, we'd have to wear cheap boots around us if it was just our speech. So, you know, Daryl really has helped um, me a great deal, you know, with, with my discernment as well, all joking aside. And, and I think, you know, uh, also, like watching watching Daryl work with teens over the years, and then you know me picking up some of the things that you know that he's done, and, and not not just like what we've done together, but like we really do pray and keep a, a center on the on the Lord when we're doing this. And if you're not, and you're in ministry, you really shouldn't be in ministry. It can't be about you. Exactly. So, oh, I know that. I knew that. That's all around the nose. Check. You didn't read the you nose. Do a check for all the time. You, we, we, it, it can't be about us, and we're not signing autographs you know we're not we just want to <laughs> for the Lord. We reflect. i'm looking at the notes right now but alan's <laughs> actually right it's kind of it's kind of fun because um <laughs> alan you know i left the particular parish where he still is and okay. um Don't so mention I left, oh saint mary magdalene that's fine <laughs> in altamont springs but it's so cool because when i left uh to um do my full-time and, you know, business endeavors, the, I said, I, I feel like Jesus watching, you know, the apostles take over and grow. And, and, and it was actually kind of a cool experience because I got to see the work that I invested in and not knowing, right. Right. You do, you do ministry. You don't like, Lord, am I really being effective? Am I really making a difference? Whatever. And when you can look back and see pretty much the same team of people that I had come back, mm-hmm. not for me, but for the ministry and see their heart, they have a heart for ministry. They want to continue on. It's like, wow, this is pretty cool. This is cool. So, I mean, Alan's really helping thrive, you know, uh, taking that particular parish and, and make it thrive and, and driving it forward in COVID times. Um, and in a lot of times, a, par- a lot of parishes just drop off when there's no minister, right? Because they're, they're person centric and they're not wor- really ministry centric. And so it's just really amazing to watch what Alan's doing and pulling people together and just, you know, driving it forward. So, hmm. well, I want to okay. commend you all in Florida because we stole your, you know, we stole the priest from Florida, which is Bishop Parks. We have Bishop Stephen wow. Parks, and we're thankful for y'all sharing him with us because he's been a marvelous asset here in Georgia. And he's just so um, caring. He has a heart. He'd like you all say in the first book, I think it's the same. 
words is that you you train up shepherds, you know, right? You just, is that right? You train sheep to be shepherds. And that is what he does. And he doesn't draw any attention to himself at all. He doesn't, it helps he's seven foot tall most, but he doesn't, on his own, say, here I am. So you're all right. Jesus has to be center of the ministry. And then that makes the ministry successful. So questions, anybody go on, jump in, y'all. I've had a few okay, shows so where I did all the talking, so I've learned my lesson. <laughs> That's I'm sick. <laughs> okay, so well, with the ministry, so do you guys come alongside the parents and then help them with like the teens, or do you? Is it just a combination of maybe like some? I don't, I don't like to use the word troubled teens because that's not really good either. But you know what I'm saying? Like, do you come alongside the parents and help them help them th with their children? You know, with the teens to yeah. kind of solve. It's, no, it's, I mean, it's been one of the biggest successes, you know, and, and we always call those kids, as Daryl would call them, you know, kids that need a little extra love, you know, oh, yeah. and so like we have those teens in every parish, but, uh, you know, we can only reach so far. So if we're not reaching their parents and if we're not reaching the primary catechist in their home, then everything that we've done, we have them for an hour on Sunday night or two hours or three hours, however long we have them, but they have them the rest of the time. And wow. so we can't wait until they get to youth group you know, or to a retreat that we're doing, even if we have them for four days, their parents have them, you know, for, for 18 years. So mm -hmm. like, we need to make sure that their parents are on board. And, uh, you know, Gerald's been really great with, you know, being able to, to get the parents to understand the mission of, of what we're trying to do. And it's to, to raise shepherds is awesome, you know, and to make, to make parents understand that is another thing. So like, it's, it's really a powerful tool and we can get the parents on the same page, you know, and understand that it's their responsibility. Like, don't wait to send them to, you know, eighth grade to learn math. You need to be teaching it to them all along. It's the same with the spirit. It's That's a good. shame that so many parents, I mean, I would call it, some parents do enable their children. I don't, Jane and I do no. not. We have too many children to even think about enabling them when they're little. I would think they didn't have the kind of time. That's However, not the theory, vocabulary. <laughs> theory in the book is more like, let's not enable, let's give them the skills so they can make decisions and solutions and i'm all about solutions especially at this age in my life because it's so easy when you're a, you know a person that's an adult to know the answer but to teach a child to be able to come up with the answer themselves that's why i got a janet's series when she showed on woman grace i was watching today so what do you think about that y'all jane ann i want to jump back real quick i think you asked a really really important question okay. you know who do we work with um and it's, it's interesting because I always kind of quote Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer, you know, he, he says he rehabilitates dogs and trains people. And, and I think we, <laughs> we, we train teens and rehabilitate parents, um, you know, in, in a spiritual sense. And really our ministry, if you stop and listen to what we're speaking about, our message is aimed for any person with a heart for young church. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's regardless of age or, or role in your life. So yes, we are speaking to parents. We're speaking to grandparents. We're speaking to the, the old people who are worried about the quote future of the church we we know pastors. Um, and, and if you, if anyone has a heart or a concern, that's who we want to reach because at the end of the day, we are all called to be youth ministers. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter. And so if we can teach a parent how to be a youth minister, and minister to their child, not parent their child, they'll do that naturally, but to minister to their needs, we're gonna be ahead. If we can teach the person in the pew who cares and prays for these teens to engage a young person and just say, hey, thanks for coming to mass, I appreciate it. And something small, that makes a difference. If we can put you know, uh, on the radar of, of the DREs who work with young kids, right? And say, wait a minute, there's another group of there. You can still minister to these people. You may not be professional. You may not be full-time. You may not be on the payroll, but here is the methodology. And in the book, that's what we talk about, the methodology we use to be able to do that successfully. And Alan really had a great point. He says, you know, it's not a program. We didn't write about a program. We wrote about a, meth a method because the method, as you'll see, Alan says, is used over and over and adapted to fit your particular needs, right? Your home needs, your needs in the parish, your needs in the school. So, and the method just keeps going on and on, right? And you refine the method as you go to reach more and more people. So thank you for asking that question, Jane. I think it's really, really important for people. And to Ellen, you mentioned, you mentioned too, Ellen, like enabling, like we definitely don't want to enable, um, we want to empower. And right. the way that we empower is by teaching kids, uh, you know, teens to, to stand up for themselves because we are, they're tested today 
more than they ever have been in the, ever in the past. And, and it's, it's, they're inundated with messages, um, sinful messages constantly and peer pressure pulling them in the wrong direction. And so what do you do? I mean, do you, you exercise them every morning before they leave the house. I mean, we, we've got to, we have to understand that they live in a world that they're going to be facing these things. So creating that fortitude, that prudence in, in our teens, that's going to help them to grow, but they've got to be able to stand on their own two feet. So when we enable, and when we, we end up with kids that have an entitled attitude toward life and that no one is entitled to anything, um, that's, that's a, a big message. And so when we work with, like Daryl said, we'll do a parish mission or we'll work with the staff at, at, at different schools and we try to get the staff you know to, to implement this method and it's very difficult method if you're used to kind of giving in when a kid says oh i can't well when you <laughs> tell them they're right that they can't then you just planted a seed. Yeah. yeah yeah oh i didn't know y'all okay i didn't i've learned something new i didn't know y'all were working with schools also Oh yeah, yeah we'll, we'll work with we'll work with schools. We'll work with parish staff. We we'll work with the Shout priests, the pastors. It. Yeah, all all across the board. The parents are our, for the for our book failing forward. That was our target because to get this into the home will also help the teachers and the priests right. and, the, and the you know the pastors and all that. But this getting it into the home was our was our first main goal. Okay. Coming from Catholic uh, educated background as well, one of the things that I, that I love, I was able to have both perspectives, you know, the, the, the theology in the schools or the religion classes, you know, are there to fill the minds of the young people and the ministry is there to fill their hearts, right? So we kind of, we kind of talk it. Uh, somebody said we come in through the back door in ministry we come in through the heart and we work our way up to their head and fill their knowledge with the lord whereas catholic education you know they dump a lot of catholic stuff in here but not necessarily a lot of teachers know how to take that in the classroom and start bringing it down to the heart so if we can help them get um to become ministers and to to minister a little more effectively take all their teaching role and and add to it i mean i think is how powerful they'll be and how powerful our catholic schools be you know, when you have teachers equipped to do that. Right. <clears throat> I'm just saying that because I've recently started working at a Catholic school. And oh. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working at St. Joe's right now, actually. And I've been in, it goes from, it goes actually from 2K all the way up to sixth grade. And I, we have two children in there. So I've been in every classroom so far. And oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and you're definitely right. And I just see that also a lot of the young parents, and I was one of these parents as well, you know, they, they do, they equipping the parents to even just a problem solve because I'm seeing a lot of, you know, young parents asking their kids, well, what do you, what do you, what do you want to do? I mean, I'm talking young and I'm thinking, oh, oh no. <laughs> so we got a guy that, you know, just like, oh, it's not a free for all. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I just, it's opened my eyes, but I, I was, I was that parent myself. As a, as a young mom. Absolutely. Amen. My parent, and I never was like this. What do you think to my kids? I wasn't. We were the authoritarian parents. We really more led the way. You did do too, I'm sure now, Jan, because you have a lot of kids. So, oh, yeah. You know. So, what, what, how do you get invited to schools? Do you want to address that? Because I think it's great because Jan does work at a school. Yeah. And so, people, do you have flyers or what do you do to advertise to be in schools? Uh, it's really been a lot of word of mouth and kind of the Holy Spirit leading us. Like before we got on, you were asking me how we got invited to, to be on Women of Grace. Yeah, and it's like just it. been, it's been one of those things where, you know, they, they've just been reaching out to us from different areas and it's, we're not trying to self-promote because it's, I think, and I really think that's the key is if we were out to promote ourselves, if it was the Daryl and Alan show, I don't think we'd get <laughs> far at all. I mean, we, we might make it on Comedy Central. Um, like, <laughs> that's probably about it but we're, we're here for the holy spirit and, and whether or not we are you know whether or not everybody knows our name is i could care less if anybody ever knows we're not seeking the spotlight we're not you know spotlight hogs it doesn't really matter who's preaching we we're, we're interested in, in in helping change a culture as daryl would say and i think that's a difficult thing to do without the holy spirit and only oh, the holy absolutely. spirit will change the culture yeah. So Jane Ann, you can 
you can use the Holy Spirit to talk to your principal and tell him to call us. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> I mean, will. Well, there's actually. Jerry, bring the book because that sells I, it. Well, I'm yeah. involved with, we the book. actually I'm involved with three Catholic schools here in Macon, Georgia. Yeah, she's good with the book. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I, there's also Mountain of Sales, which is, goes from sixth to 12th grade, which I'll have a daughter attending. We'll have three daughters attending there next year. So, and listen, um, we could save them airfare. We could drive up. Because we're just in our way. Oh, yeah, you're not that far. You're not that far. But it's so true. I mean, I see even with, you know, just, uh, I mean, we've homeschooled um, a long time, but but we're also have, we've also done some private schools, Catholic schools, and then some public schools. And then, and now we're transitioning completely into just, you know, the Catholic school. But um, I just see that with your, you know, problem solving and just using just some logic is just, it's like almost lost with our teens. I mean, and uh, yeah. I know it's with the social media, you know, it's, it, it is. I mean, you got, you deal with a lot of, now they're, de- you know, they deal with a lot of cyber bullying and things like that. It's just, you know, and then I don't know. It is, it's, there's a lot, but they they definitely problem solving. I see. Jane yeah, is, um, Ellen too. <laughs> As you're talking, you know, there's a great need are, are in ministry lately, kind of some of the, bu- there's always buzzwords that float in, in certain time periods. And one of them right now is accompaniment. You know, that's, we need to okay. accompany. That's, gonna, yeah. that's a, right? Yeah, okay. That's so, a yeah, conference. Know, yeah, let's that's accompany, a you know. Yes. Uh, what I love about our church is we use these incredible words. Mm-hmm. What's frustrating <laughs> is nobody says, what do they mean? Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and part of that, in all fairness, part of that is, um, we leave it broad because we want to leave room for interpretation for a particular situation of what a company it looks like. As you know, there's many people, if the church came out and said, a company it means this, then you would have those individuals saying, well, if you're outside these lines, that's not a company, but you're not being Catholic. Eh. So, <laughs> you know, I, I love our church because we say this is what we need to do. And yet there's room for the Holy Spirit to lead each person yeah, within yeah. a set of guidelines of what that looks yeah. like. Mm-hmm. And so your teens, and I, and I love the teenage years so much because this is where our, our own kids, and, and my youngest is 16, um, and he is more needy now than he was when he was an infant. He doesn't realize it. He will deny it. He will, he will denial of it. Um, but it's okay. He doesn't know that he knows. And so this is where we as parents by the grace of God, he made me a youth minister. I can walk into that space through the trauma in his life and the things that have happened and, and say, okay, here, we're going to walk. And it's not pretty and it's yeah. ugly. And it's, and, and Alan and I have gone back and forth on, you know, I'm kind of more lax parenting style and, and, you know, Alan has a little bit more firmer rules and that's just, but we go back and forth. And at the end of the day, you know, we're both raising our kids Catholic to the best of our abilities, but our, our kids are coming from two different family situations. So, so it looks messy, you know, and sometimes, but it does, and Alan will, you know, when I cry, when I cry and complain and I'm not being a successful dad, you know, you always have those friends in Christ yeah. who are like, you know what, you're doing okay, man. You're doing a good job. Just you're, you know, it's messy, but you're in the right path, <laughs> you know? So uh, it's good to have that. Okay. Well, that, I'm is really good. that is Alan's really good. That is really good. a good friend. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they're brothers. Um, guys, I think I was listening to the show today. I mean, I spent a lot of time doing that because I was ill. But listen, I thought that maybe these skills could be taught in Engage Weekend as well as in, you know, to the classes of parents. Because a lot of times marital problems come from either one person's not really a real grown up. You know, they try, but they didn't know that they had to like, you know, live the gospel and, and be a mature adult. And sometimes it's because they don't they want to run away from problems. They thought, well, you know, I have Jesus and I'm married and I don't have problems. And to be a grown up means to put some skills from the word of God into practice and be a problem solver in a marriage. You can't just only want your way, if you all know what I mean. What do you think, Roger? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. No, yeah you're 100% right. I, I, would, I would say that um, it, would, it would need, the method would look the same. But obviously the delivery would be a little different because the last thing that my wife would want me to do is teach her something. Uh, but I, just, I mean, if she didn't know she was being taught something, that would be wonderful. But um, she's pretty bright. But yes, I, I, part, of, part of this method, the, the reason it's such a powerful training method for parents is because it teaches us to slow down and to really mm-hmm. see understanding. 
And yes, if we could do that with our wives, if we could do that with our jobs, if we could do that with people who are strangers to us on the street, I think that we would have a different world. And so if we can, if we can slow down and seek mm. understanding before we start, you know, putting our own two cents for, because a lot of times, I mean, quite honestly, the biggest debates Daryl and I ever have are when neither of us want to slow down enough to listen to the other person, right? And that happens in marriages, that happens in friendships, that happens with parents and teens, because we want you so badly to understand what we want to say that we're not taking the time to understand what's going on in, the, in your head. And if we can understand what's going on in your head, maybe we'll know why your heart acts the way it does. So this, this COPEC method that we talk about in Failing Forward is really, really a powerful tool. It can be used for certain uh, for, for marriage weekends. That's one of the reasons that we like to talk to pastors about this and go into Catholic schools is because they will know where this can be implemented across the board. That's good. So if you tell the COPEC method can, for the people that, you, that haven't watched or read the book or maybe tell about the method, you guys know, that'd be a good time to start with the... Got to buy the book. No, I keep trying. Uh, I keep trying. Yeah. I was to say that. All right, go on. You know, it's interesting just to keep in mind, though, like I said, the method is going to shift to meet to meet particular circumstances. You know, this the, when we wrote this out in the five, the five points of um, challenge, observe. Um, oh, my gosh. Uh, I'm like, Copec. OK, uh, process, evaluate, challenge again. When we. When you do that, we have the luxury of doing a four-day outing, you know, intensive, boom. A lot of people hear what we did. They're like, oh, I can't do that as a teacher in a classroom, or I can't. It's like, yeah, good. You, you, you can still do COPEC, but it won't look like it did when you take a bunch of teens out into the woods for four, for four days um, and, uh, and, you know, put on the whole program and stuff. But you can, you can do the challenge in your own ways. And, and in the book, you'll read, Alan has a, it's always, he has, Great example. There's a small, simple way to implement something at home. It's a challenge at home. And anybody can do it. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You got to buy the book. You got to read it. It's surprising. Unless, Alan, you want to share your secret. But um, it's really, it's it's applicable to your own personal situation. You know? So. You never had a pause before. But if you pause in prayer, some God will reveal to you those things you're supposed to be doing. So. We, someone jump in. <laughs> I practice well, I just, That's my practice. I was, I was just going to say, listen to this, you know, just thinking about me uh, parenting with our own, you know, teens is that I've learned so much from them, actually. Just, like, we just, it seems like late at night, that's when all the truth serum comes out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't know. I just, uh, I just, you know, you really do learn a lot of their heart and how they're thinking. And I think parents, as parents, I've, I've learned, you know, I've got to just be, you know, at, at whatever time, and usually that is very late at night. Jane Ann, but, uh, yes. Let me, let me ask you something. Have you ever told one of your kids that you've learned something from them? Um, yes, I have actually. <laughs> I think that's so powerful as a parent because, you know, being humble and letting them know like we make mistakes too, allows mm -hmm. them to be humble and, and let us know that they've made mistakes. A lot of times as parents, they, we don't do what you did. You know, we don't say, hey, I learned from you. I, I made a mistake in what I did the other day and you taught me a lesson. Because no one, like, as, especially like men, we don't want to ask directions. Like I will drive 500 <laughs> miles in the wrong direction just because I want to say, I just wanted to look at this gas station before I turned around. You know, and, and we have so much pride. And as parents too, we kind of let that kind of filter yeah. into, and, and as husbands, and, and wives, you know, we kind of let that filter into our relationship. And then it's like, well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die on this hill. I'm going to mm -hmm. say that I'm not wrong no matter what. But if, if we can let that pride go and be a little humble, yeah. that, I think it's beautiful. That if you ever tell your kids that, hey, I learned something from you. Thank you for teaching me that. That'll go so far. that you want. I need to, to do it more, though. I need to do it more. And I've also learned, too, that in certain situations, like you're talking about problem solving. And this is, I think, where the Holy Spirit comes in for parents is that you have to know when it's like, you know, like if it's if it's your to give them a, li a little bit more grace with the situation, like, hey, I understand this was a really hard, tough call on the decision you made or, you know, things like that, too, because I have found that in the beginning of my parenting, I was very rigid. I myself I was very rigid. I was very legalistic. And um, 
And I knew as we, you know, the children started getting more into their teens and I learned from that. And I was like, oh, so I kind of like went way over here on this, you know, you have, you're like kind of come back to the middle. But um, so I've learned that, you know, in a certain situation that you've got to have the Holy Spirit to discern, okay, is this the time I really crack the whip? You know what I mean? Like, or yeah. do I say, hey, you know, give a little bit more grace, you know, this is a learning, ex- you know what I'm saying? I think that's part of parenting thing. I mean, that's just part of yeah, parenting. Yeah, it's that's hard. That's ministry. I mean, that's, parent, right? that's, we overcompensate for something that we did wrong. It's like, oh, I was so strict and now I'll let you stay out for four days at the beach. Well, well hold on. Well, I, that's where we get humble. Hey, I was wrong in that situation. It yeah. doesn't mean that I'm going to give you everything that you've ever, you know, and right. now you're going to take advantage of me because I told you that I was wrong and I was humble. That doesn't right. mean that we're suckers or doormats. That's right. What it means is that we that we, we owned up to something. We made a mistake. Right. It's a husband yeah. instructed by mistakes, guys. I want to address that because parents make tons of mistakes on, especially moms always feel like they're making it daily, but after you, yeah. you're a parent a while and your children are grown, you have to rectify some of those things that you did that were wrong and that you see the fruit of it is how you can, you wake up when you see, you begin to see, whoa, that fruit wasn't good. And that was probably partly my fault. How do you all want to address that? Ellen, the simplest way, just blame your kid. Say, look, you <laughs> no, hey, look this true. is what I told, I told my boy, I said, all this messing up that I do that you're all upset about. I said, it's really your fault. I said, you popped out of the womb. I looked at your butt. There was no instructions tattooed on your backside. I said, so I'm making it up as I go. And, uh, and <laughs> I said, you know, like, come on. So cut me a break. If you had instructions, I wouldn't know how to, how to parent you and what you need. <laughs> oh, dad, stay, you know. But they, um, <laughs> Just it goes what Alan says. You just kind of gotta you own up when you mess up. You know, hey, mm-hmm. I spoke too harshly. Hey, I you know I jumped to conclusion too quickly. Hey, you know I'm really sorry. I snapped at you. I was um, I wasn't you know I I jumped to conclusion. You know, or hey, <laughs> and it doesn't just excuse their behavior, right? Right. 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 It's, it's 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 case in point. So Alan knows this very well. We actually we had this conversation about um, swear words, swearing. Oh, yeah. And and we kind of have him and I have two different um uh, what's the word uh, I'm looking for? Uh levels I'm right of, and you're wrong. I'm not sure how to say that in one word. Well, <laughs> <laughs> trying to narrow things down is that I'm He's right. Got girls. And, yeah. and, and it's okay. It's okay. That's why that's why Alan's wife pays me hundred bucks a month to keep coaching him and working with him to mold him, <laughs> him, to mold him into the husband that she knows he can be. Now go bring your wife some flowers, Alan. All right. So, <laughs> so uh, we had this conversation about swear words, swearing, cussing, yada, yada. Okay. And um, one day my son, we had was situated, my family dynamic, family life, or my kids went through a, a, a divorce. And so it's really rough and a very challenging deal. So one day, in Ang, I mean, it was tension shortly after divorce. And so they're, they're emotionally charged. I mean, you know, and my son just is upset as all get up and just unloads, you know, expletives in, in my direction. And so growing up in my day, if that ever happened, uh, I probably would not be around to see because my parents would have beat the living crap out of me. And so we had this conversation and what happened was by the grace of God, I knew that's not really my son. He's in a moment of pain. And this is how that pain is coming out and manifesting. And these are the words he's using to express, to emote, as we talk about, and express that emotion. And in any other circumstances, you know, we need to look at that and say, okay, that's not the best way. But once that was over and things started coming down, right? We could then enter into later, it took a while, a conversation about anger, emotion, venting, uh, respect, and how our anger comes out and how we need to grow as men and, and, and channel anger in a way that's more respectful, things like that. And that that particular instance led to more beautiful encounters and conversations and actually strengthened my youngest son and I um, in this process. And so it's it's it is sometimes with our kids, our teens, it goes against everything that we were necessarily raised mm-hmm. um, to 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, accept. 
but yet mm-hmm. it's not that it's not that I'm allowing my son to disrespect me mm-hmm. at that moment. It may sound that way from the outside and everybody looking in, but in that moment, what people don't see is that my son is in pain. Right. And, and we can't have a logical, rational conversation until we address that pain and get him yeah. through that. And then we can have that moment. And so going back to this whole thing is, is that's where we have to know our sheep, as you know, Alan mentions in the book, um, and, and smell like our sheep and lead our sheep through that valley of death. That was a valley of death moment for him and, and get him to the to quiet pastures and to relax so that we can then, you know, walk with the Lord and, and show him the other things. But it's ugly. It's really ugly and it's hurtful and it's dirty and ugh, and we just but that's what we have to do, you know. Right. There's my little monologue. That was good. <laughs> no, we all enjoyed that's that. Good, but... It's like the yeah, I just think go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I just think that's really good because we kind of we're kind of experiencing that a little bit on just transitioning from homeschooling into school. Um, you know, we're learning new routine, new, you know, it's just a whole new atmosphere, it's a whole new everything. And so, you know, just recognizing that when there's words spoken like that. Mm-hmm. you know, that we got to get to to another place and, and not just brush it over. I think, you know, I think maybe growing up too, you know, it's just like, okay, fine. You feel that way. Let's move on. You know, yeah. instead of like working through the messiness, I think, you know, <laughs> we do have to work through it. So no matter what it looks like, we have, we really do need to work through it mm-hmm. and yeah. let our kids know it's okay that we work through it. So I, I, I love that you said that because that I'm, I'm kind of in that situation myself. I mean, as a homeschool parent at former or whatever, you know, one of the things, and we would see this in ministry, Alan and I, a lot, a lot of our homeschool parents, um, and, and for those who send their kids to Catholic school, because this is why I said my kids to Catholic school, we want to shield and bubble our kids from society. Yeah. And I want you to think yeah. of something. Which is the, con- the constitutions of Vatican II, right? God in his best, um, is the, the church in the modern world, not the right. church shielded from the modern world. So, even if we're homeschooling, we're Catholic schooling, our whole job is to teach them how to engage the world as it is, not bubble them away from it. Because what's going to happen is, and I've seen this many times, is they go into the world having been bubble, you know, Catholic shielded, and they don't know how to cope. So yeah. I, I, I mean, it's a huge step to go into Catholic schools, Jane Ann, and I'm going to use you because you're my you know, low resident parent here. That's <laughs> Uh, but that's, a, that's a huge step because now you're into a world of, all right, these things exist. You know, your kids are going to know premarital sex. Uh, they're going to know sexual terminology. They're going to be inundated with this and this and this. So now it's not that we deny it's out there. We say, how do we navigate it? Right. That's, the, that's exactly. the next step. And if you read our book, uh, you know, Al, in the book, Alan, Al does, I'm not saying Alan, Al, you know, he always writes some good stuff. That, yes, thank you. Because his name's first. Uh, <laughs> you know, he, he outlines... He outlines some of the ways, some of the ways we do that, right? And we talk about we want our kids to fail small. That's right. And at home and in a controlled way, so that they know, uh oh, the choices that will are are unrecoverable, and they can avoid those choices. So fail all you want at home small, so that you'll have the knowledge, the wisdom, the experience to see the big failures and know how to get around them, and say, I don't want to make that choice. And that's really what we're doing. We're teaching kids. All right, it's okay to make mistakes, but there are some mistakes you can't recover from. So let's start, you know, putting some wisdom in there and asking the Lord to enlighten our minds and our hearts as to what those look like. And now we have the tools. The book gives you the tools to navigate all that. And that's why Alan makes his wife enchiladas on their anniversary because he has the tools. To be a better <laughs> no, husband. Good anniversary. job, Alan. I'm proud of you. I say, uh, you know what I was thinking though, you know, when you were sharing about the swearing, is that. The father knows us all intimately. That's why he deals with us all intimately. Uh, there's certain, we don't want to sin against the Lord, but there's more, sometimes you'll see someone else is getting a little more leeway in something than someone else because that's where they came from. So if they're running on a broken leg and they're going down the race and they have a broken leg, God's being more merciful to that guy than someone that has been formed in the Catholic faith, healthy and whole, and they're walking along, you know, doing the right thing. It just... As a parent, you share about your son. You knew his pain. That's how father does with us. So I thought it was an excellent point. And I think it's excellent to say that uh, these tools can be used in any, any area of your life. Anything else? 
Ellen, well, thank you for please. saying that. Take that, yeah. Alan. Ellen agrees with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on. He had to do the so. I don't <laughs> hate you. Where Daryl and I disagree on this uh, is how far it can go sometimes. So, like my my daughters, I'll give you the same scenario, right? So I have do my daughter. Uh, uh, do they swear first? Do they swear? Well, yeah, I mean, no. one of them, well, one of them said a word, a word that I did not appreciate the other day. She was angry with something, and it, and I stopped the conversation. I said, "Hold it, nope, back it up." And she's like, "Well, why?" She goes, "I'm just upset. I didn't mean to say it." I'm like, "Okay." I go, "But you know, it's disrespectful to me. You need to know. You need to learn restraint because if you just do whatever you feel like because you're angry at any time, and so that my my anger will occur at that moment." Oh. Okay. Does anybody hear me? We lost some people in Frozen Land, but they'll be coming back in a minute. So um, we'll be talking with Alan and Daryl, and we're talking about um, the book, Falling Forward. So y'all hop in when you have your... Um, Hold my hand right now, but you're not going to talk like that. From me. You know, and it was one of those moments where, let me, let me introduce you to Jesus. Hey. Technical, this is called technical difficulty. <laughs> I, we have, and there's Daryl and I on the show right now. Where'd y'all go? <laughs> it's technical difficulty. We don't know why, but Zoom has never done this before. And we did have the one show, remember, Jim? We had that poor little lady had to call us back. So um, there he is. Okay, now we're talking about. Okay, know, we're talking about once again, we're talking about the book. <laughs> forward, and we don't, we keep all the in the show. We find them interesting. No matter what, so please talk in and go because we have to close the show. We have five minutes to close well, it. And, and now, are y'all frozen again? <laughs> She's back. You're unfrozen. You're smiling. <laughs> I'm frozen. So go. Where we're speaking. No. You go. But you know, Alan brought up a great point. It is. It is situational. And in his case, with with his daughter, um, you know, her being older. Frozen. They can have more of that adult relationship, and now he's teaching a different, a different lesson, right? Yeah. There's there's right. something he shares like you know, do you respect the office of parent? So That's if you're right. gonna the office of parent, you wouldn't use language around that. You know, if you respect, I would say the office of God, if you will, but God Himself, you wouldn't swear mm -hmm. around God. So, right. you know, in, and that's really where it's both and, you know. And this is where he challenges me to to look as a friend to say, okay. You know, am I giving my son too much leeway? I mean, you know, if I let him do it again, we've already had a couple of conversations about, you know, moving. And, and it's interesting to see how he's shifted. And there's times where he emotes with a few things. And I'm like, uh, let's try that again. And he's like, oh, okay. You know, and he's really good training. Oops, we keep freezing. I don't know why. Realizing. Right. So, so I need to bring him that other side and, and get him. Hmm. Okay. He needs to get his daughters to just how to swear a moat, you know. And I, and I think, you know, I think your wife can help you. No, Eileen's not like that. She's not like that at all. We're gonna throw a bunch of packs on the floor and make them run barefoot. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, I'm sorry to, that we're doing this technical difficulty, but I'll be thinking about what you want to do to close off this show, and I'll just give a little intro to whoever wants to go first: Alan, Daryl, or Jane Ann. I'm gonna go one more time with. This is Call Alan us. and Daryl, whose name last name I cannot pronounce, but Jane did a great job. Thank you, Jane Ann. Their book, <laughs> Falling Forward, they're, they're um, been on radio and TV, and they we, we would like you to buy the book. They're going to tell you, where you could, just where you can get it, and they're going to close off the show because we have a time limit, and we just enjoyed them so much. We'll have you back again. Anybody want to oh, close yeah. off last words? Sure. If you want to uh, check out our book, uh, you can go to adventurecatholic.com, or our publisher also has it at Sophia Institute Press. If you'd like to have Daryl and I <clears throat> come talk at your parish or at your school, you can reach out to us that way as well. We're also on Facebook at Adventure Catholic. Okay, and um, anybody next for the close off final, oops, final um, yeah. thoughts? Thank you. No, great. We love it. Thanks for having us back on, ladies. Appreciate it. This yeah, thank good. you. Well, y'all, we thank you. Great. Always a lot of, yeah. lot of wisdom, a lot of wit, and a lot of humility. Oh, yeah. <laughs> finally, <laughs> utility. <laughs> I love the interesting stories, Jane. We should let Daryl more time, though. He's didn't even get a bio. <laughs> no, I just, it was great. Thank you. I learned. I've learned a lot. And that's what I kind of, you know, when we do this, I, I kind of come as a student, you know, because I, I have.
have lots, lots to learn. Well, have them out to Macon. You all will love Macon. It's God's country. I'm going to say right now, okay. there's a wonderful pastor and St. Joseph is a great school. They all are. So mm -hmm. thank you all for all you come with. And um, one more time, someone say the letters C, <laughs> the, the acronym. So there you go want pack. to say this? Oh, Copac. I was like, what is she saying? Copac. Copac. <laughs> if you all know what that means, please write us a letter. We'll send you a free book. Yeah. <laughs> how terrible as they say go. <laughs> how can they reach you real quick? Did, did y'all say how they can reach you? www.adventurecatholics.com. Okay, thank you so much again, Alan and Daryl and Jane Ann. Thank you as always. We had a great show and it, it was marvelous. And I just want to say this is Ellen Mongan from Wow Mom. I hope you enjoy watching and being um, shown a few more skills that maybe you didn't know before. Being a strong parent that teaches children to solve their own problems and to be a leader in the Catholic faith is what we need. And every parent Amen. can learn from them and every child. So thank you again. And may God bless your day from Wow Mom. Come join us again and tell a friend. Thank you again, everyone and all. Thank you. I'm closing off this with my eyesight. <laughs>